Thank you, madam. <laughs> The owner of the campsite was a rather interesting character. A bit like Mr. Fiddler from the Carry On Camping films. Um, I'd say to him, well, how much are the showers? That'll be a pound. Okay, an extra tents? Pound. Fair enough. Uh, extra gazebos? Pound to you. Unusually, we all found the museum and arrived about the same time. Enjoying Anglesey was Richard in his MGB Roadster, whilst Keith brought along his newly acquired Granada estate. Andy was in his MGF, and Anthony and Pat were in the 4.2 litre Jaguar XJ. Tour Virgins, Ian and Jane were in the Volvo 240 Jean Hell, while Carl was there in his Mark 1 Mondeo. Mike came along in his 1960 Vauxhall Victor with Lee in his MGB. Phil was in his Rover 3.5 litre P5B and Gus was piloting Henry, the JC Midge. Graham and Sue were in Humphrey the Humber Sector and Guy was in his XR3i Turbo. Ian and Sarah were in another Granada estate with Nick and Joe in the Mark III Jensen Interceptor. Finally we have Dean and Liz in the Morris Minor. This is a terrific little museum on Anglesey, a Tacklatade. Uh, a real diverse selection of cars they've got inside and the uh, agricultural equipment. So the staff are really, really friendly. They came out, made us welcome, even put a space aside for us to park the classics. Uh, and it's got a really nice restaurant and uh, area to sit outside. Highly recommend it. This was my favourite part of the tour. A real eclectic mix of uh, cars and tractors and trucks and all sorts of different ephemera really really interesting place and the uh, owner was um, 14 when he first started him started restoring an old tractor which he uh, got from the local farmer and uh, and it's just on and on gone from there i asked him if he sells anything because i was interested in something and he said he'd only ever sold two cars in his whole life so uh, very good. Look out way to go and see him again. I decided to uh, just pull up to one side and get shots of everybody coming out of the car park, which took quite a long while, to say the least. But great day.
After a good look around the museum, we set off across the island from the southwest to the east coast and Mulfra, where we were to visit the lifeboat station and Sea Watch Centre. Right, Henry, show them what you can do. Strength, time to stretch your legs. Let's give it some. Hey, Gus is JC Midge, is powered by a 1300 uh, Triumph engine. Uh, operated with a pair of SUs from a 1500 Dolomite and as you hear it really does sound good and it goes really well. Here we go again following Gar, getting a little bit bored. Then he pulled over to the side to let me pass. I thought here we go again. One big rov. Get that V8 singing. So these are some of my favourite times on tour. Uh, when we're all in convoy and we're just going through towns nice and sedate. And people are often walking around or sitting outside the pub. And they're just really pleased to see the cars go by, give us a wave. We'll give them a honk of the horn. And uh, it's just a pleasant way to spend the day. Mulfra Lifeboat Station has had a remarkable history, with crews being awarded 37 medals for gallantry since its formation in 1875, when the new lifeboat house was built for a mere 160 pounds. The current lifeboat house is home to Kiwi, a Tamar class lifeboat, which for the technically minded is powered by two 1,000 horsepower Caterpillar C18 diesel engines propelling it to a stop top speed of 25 knots or 29 miles an hour for landlubbers. It carries a crew of seven. There is also a D-class rib for inshore rescues with a crew of three. We were made most welcome by the Sea Watch Centre manager Elizabeth and her husband who are Jaguar enthusiasts. After a look around the museum, a browse in the shop and a walk to the lifeboat house and relaxing in the sunshine and sea air, we made our way onwards.
think Richard and Shiny Paul may have had one too many burgers at lunch, judging by that scraping. It had been planned to stop at Seamus Bay for refreshments. The first cars to arrive rebelled at the £4 parking fee, and the last to arrive found that all the parking spaces were taken. An executive decision was made to depart for the South Stack area of Hollyhead and seek refreshments there. A wrong turn allowed me to show everyone what an empty car park looked like because we didn't see many on Saturday. Refreshments at last, we thought, but only the first few managed to buy an ice cream. They closed the shop before the rest of us could get to the door. It's like Tesco's car park in 1987. I'm sure that Morris mine has been breathed on, you know. It goes far too well for a standard mog.
is truly amazing how quickly you can put the roof of a soft top up when it's chucking it down with large lumps of rain. Well, you would say that, Anthony, but uh, poor old Paul got soaking wet through it. It took quite a while to get their top up, whereas me, seconds. Ha <laughs> ha. As we pass through Lamberis, the Lamberis Lake Railway and Dinorwig, the electric mountain, are to the north or right hand side of the picture and Snowdon Mountain Railway to the south. This part of the drive was really, really nice. Typical uh, Wales countryside, but unfortunately typical Wales weather. You can see the clouds building up front and uh, rain to come. Yeah. So I really did enjoy putting the old Mondo through its paces uh, on the A4086. Uh, Penny Pass Road. It's uh, between Bedgellet and Clanberris and it really is in my opinion the best driving road in Wales uh, and the second best in the UK, uh, second only to the uh, Apple Cross Pass in the Highlands. You must come down and drive it at least once on a clear day. It's just breathtaking. I just love how there's like several several hundred ton boulders just randomly scattered either side of the road. It's just so, uh, you know, it looks like it's been there millions of years. It may well have been for all I know, but what a road. Come on Humber, you can keep up with Dick Dastardly in the Jaguar. So pleased we managed to capture some footage of the convoy going over the Clanberries Pass. That's what I wanted and it does look fantastic.
magnificent Lamberry's Pass was formed between 539 and 419 million years ago. The road up the pass is spectacular. The summit is at 359 metres. Having left the Lamberis Pass, we are now driving down the Afon Glaslin Valley towards Klingwinet and Bedgellet. Much of the scenery is totally different, but still spectacular. It was worth a drive just for this one view at the top of the Clamberis Pass. It doesn't get any better than that.
The narrow streets of Bed Gellert are typical of Snowdonian villages. We crossed over the Afon Glaslin amongst the tourist shops whilst avoiding all the other traffic. As we head off into the Aberglaslin Pass, the last building in Bed Gellert is the wonderfully named Royal Ghost Hotel. Bad boys, bad boys, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when they come for all you? Don't worry, it's only the Rosas. Scarf it! Our journey to Pulse Maddock was to take the Woodland Wanderer narrow gauge train up the Fistinyog Railway from Porth Maddock Harbour Station to Tanny Bowl Station and Tea Room. After refreshments, we returned to the Harbour Station. We could tell that Gar had arranged the ride as we arrived at the Tea Rooms in pouring rain. Our locomotive, Blanche, who was built in 1895 by the Hunslet Engine Company in Leeds, certainly qualifies as a British vehicle built before 1985. We'd managed to get an upgrade to the observation car at the end of the train, but sadly there were one too many to fit, so we split into two, with five taking another carriage. This was a most enjoyable ride. Thanks for organising it, Gar.
Those returning to the motel at Triada Bay enjoyed fish and chips from the local chip shop, either at the motel or down by the sea. And that brought to an end a wonderful day. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, with the kids. Say hi, Lee. Hi, Hope. <laughs>